This is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good morning up to Tuesday, 6 o'clock. I'm Ray Collins. I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for joining us for hour number two of Good Morning Sun Coast this morning. Lots of weather to talk about. It's yes. Early start to the morning, but going to be a good Indeed, day. Indeed, it's going to be a nice day today, topping out about 70. Unfortunately, my computer has frozen, which is what we'll all be doing <laughs> Thursday morning. Yeah, well symbolic. Done. Yes, indeed. Mark in Palmetto has 46 degrees. Richard in Northport comes in with 48 degrees. And I'll go back there, turn on the uh, space heater, and warm that yes. up. And <laughs> you we'll share that over this way? Just aim it at the whole <laughs> That's studio? We'll yeah. I'll pass it around. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll be giving you the complete forecast coming up in a few. Suffice it to say, though, that we do have a first alert weather day coming up Wednesday night into Thursday morning for some wind chill factors and possibly freezing temperatures across Florida. Wow. We'll talk All about right. it in a sec. Wow. All right, let's check first alert traffic right now. A little build up there on State Road 70, just east of 301, otherwise pretty clear in Manatee County. Checking the uh, northern half of Sarasota County. Nothing to speak of right now besides some little slowdowns there in Clark. Nothing major, though. And our final map to the south will show us a little blip there northbound on 41 as you get through Northport. 601 right now. Topping our news this half hour, the potential for a government shutdown grows with the program protecting undocumented immigrants at the heart of that debate. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has the latest from Washington. Today, President Trump is back at the White House after spending Martin Luther King Day at his private golf club in Mar-a-Lago. But the potential for a government shutdown and the controversy over his racially charged comments, said in private, followed him. No, no, I'm not a racist. I am the least racist person you have ever interviewed. That I can tell you. The only Democratic senator to attend the immigration meeting last week insists the president used an offensive phrase to describe Haiti and African nations. This speaks to America and its view toward immigration. I don't believe the majority of Americans agree with the president. There isn't much agreement in Washington either. Congress has until midnight Friday to make a deal on a number of issues before government funding runs out. At the heart of any deal is DACA, the program protecting nearly 800,000 young undocumented immigrants from deportation. Over the weekend, Trump posted on Twitter that the Obama-era program, DACA, was probably dead, even after he rejected a potential bipartisan plan last week. <laughs> this family in Michigan already reeling from the immigration debate. Jorge Garcia, a husband and father of two, has been living in Detroit for 30 years. Monday night, he was deported to Mexico, his kids hugging him goodbye, not knowing when they'll see him again. It's a nightmare. They're sad, they're depressed. They don't really comprehend everything that's going on. All they know is that their dad is gone. Democrats are not backing down and insist if Republicans want their support on a spending deal, it must include a legislative fix for DACA recipients. If Congress doesn't come up with a solution, the program ends March 5th. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, Washington. And today we're expected to learn the results of Donald Trump's first physical as president. The doctor who performed it will discuss the results during today's White House press briefing. Now the physical actually took place last Friday at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. In a statement put out by the White House, the doctor is quoted as saying the 71-year-old president is in excellent health. Also today, former White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon is meeting today with a House Intelligence Panel about the Russian investigation. A source told CNN that Bannon has retained an attorney to represent him in this closed-door interview. He's expected to face several questions about the 2016 presidential campaign. You recall Bannon was a top aide in the Trump White House until last summer when he was abruptly fired. And another top White House official is also expected to talk with members of Congress about that investigation. White House Communications Director Hope Hicks will meet with the House Intelligence Committee possibly later on this week. The committee plans to question her knowledge of contacts between Trump associates and the Russians. Hicks will be the one of President Trump's closest confidants to be privately interviewed by that panel. Republican Senator Jeff Flake is expected to deliver a Senate floor speech tomorrow that is critical of President Trump, and he is a fellow Republican. While he is expected to invoke the name of former Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin in the speech, Flake denies that he's comparing the two. The Arizona senator announced last month he is not seeking re-election. And the new U.S. Embassy is expected to open in London today. President Trump tweeted out last week that he canceled his trip there because of the cost and location of the new embassy. He blamed his decision to not visit the U.K. on a, quote, bad deal cut by the Obama administration. 
But interesting, the original decision to move that embassy from its prime location in Mayfair to a regeneration site in Battersea was actually made by the administration of a Republican president, George W. Bush. An update now on that false missile warning that panicked Hawaii on Saturday. The officer responsible has been, shall we say, reassigned to a different post. State officials say the man simply pushed the wrong button. President Trump called it a mistake and thanked officials for taking responsibility. Hawaiian authorities said they've added increased security to their alert system and are reviewing the particular incident. And it is a shocking story out of Southern California this morning where police arrested a couple suspected of holding 13 of their children captive in their home. 57-year-old David Allen Turpin and 49-year-old Louise Anna Turpin are both charged with torture and child endangerment. Police say a 17-year-old girl escaped from the home and then called 911. She told authorities she and her 12 siblings were being held captive inside the home by her parents, some being bound with chains and padlocks. Now, when police responded to the home, they found the siblings ranging in age from 2 to 29 years old in filthy and dungeon-like conditions. Authorities say the siblings appeared malnourished and that even the seven siblings who are actually adults look like children. They were all in PJs because it was early in the morning. Um, they were very, very pale skinned, like almost like they've never seen the sun. But I've seen a couple of the older ones, so they all, um, and it was mostly girls um, and then um, kind of small framed. I'd say kind of tiny, almost looked a little malnutritioned. Bail has been set at $9 million for each one of the suspects. Now, meanwhile, the children are all being treated at local medical centers. Now for the latest on this story, breaking news, plus your up-to-the-minute first alert forecast. We're going to have some first alert weather days coming up later on this week. You can just head over to our app. You can find it under WWSB or My Sun Coast. And happening today, the deadline to register to vote is today for next month's special election for a seat representing Sarasota in the State House. That election is one month from today. Three candidates are running to finish the rest of Alex Miller's unexpired term. She resigned earlier this month earlier this year, rather, after her first few months in office. Our Marla Spence joins us now from a polling place in Newtown. Marla, good morning. Good morning to you, Stephanie and Ray. That's right. This is just one polling location where some Sarasota residents will be casting their vote in the February 13th special election. But if they are not registered to vote come today, they will be missing out on choosing their candidate for state representative District 72. Now, in order to register to vote, if you are not registered to vote, you can pick up an application at any of uh, driver's license office, post office, or public library, just like this North Sarasota library. And you can take the application to any supervisor of election offices in Sarasota. Now the candidates for this state Representative District 72 are James Vernon Buchanan, Margaret Good, and Allison Foxall. Tonight, residents of Sarasota will be having the chance to meet with those candidates face to face. And coming up at 6:30, we're going to be telling you how, if you are interested in meeting with those residents. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Marla. New this morning, an Orlando boy has died from rabies after being scratched by an infected bat. His father, Henry Roke, said he found a sick bat, placed it in a bucket, and told his son not to touch it, but the son touched it anyway. Father said he washed the wound thoroughly, but did not take the boy to the hospital until a week later when the boy developed numb fingers and a headache. A little boy named Riker passed away last Sunday. It's important to note that rabies is almost always fatal after symptoms develop. It's vital to receive a vaccine right away. And a Florida Keys commercial fishing captain is out of jail after being arrested. Investigators say he illegally dumped more than 30 lobster traps along a coral reef. Ricardo Hernandez was booked on 31 counts of commercial dumping and 31 counts of evidence tampering following a two-year investigation by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. They're like the lobster traps. They are actually a really big problem because they continue to trap, injure, or sometimes even kill sea life long after they're lost and even damage some of those sensitive habitats. Can you detect a difference between lobster from the Keys and lobster from the north at all? Some oh, yes. Can. can you? Yes. Big What's difference. Very What's different, I think. What's the difference? I, I kind of believe that the Florida lobster is a little sweeter. Do you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I do. Yeah, kind of like tastier. oysters all different places. A little harder to find, too. I yeah, think. yeah, that's true. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Anyway.
How does uh, like temperatures in the 20s sound? No good. I feel like lobster sounds so much better. <laughs> I agree. We'll take the lobster. Couldn't agree more. Uh, yeah, that's po potentially what the wind chills will make it feel like on Thursday morning, a first alert weather day. We'll talk about that with you. Also, ahead first alert, traffic and search dogs are now coming in to help in the search for missing victims of those California mudslides. We'll tell you how those canines are helping to find those in need when we come back. Here's a nice shot of the Rosemary Gorgeous. District in downtown Sarasota. It is chilly out there at 610. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast on ABC7. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. My name is Stefan Campagna, we're Ben Gates and Dramus, and here is your Law Tip of the Week. If you've been injured in an accident, whether or not it's your fault, your insurance company might be responsible for some of your expenses. So give us a call, we've got your back. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. ABC 7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Temperatures right now across the region are generally hovering around the 50 degree mark. 48 degrees Lakewood Ranch and Parrish and Bradenton. 48 degrees in Sarasota. 51 degrees in Venice and Inglewood and 49 in Northport, Mayaka, Wachula, Arcadia. Not so bad, right? When you wake up day after tomorrow, you can cut about 20 degrees off this temperature. Uh, and that will be the feels like temperature outside, maybe even colder than that because of the winds combined with the cold air that's going to be arriving here on the Sun Coast. It'll be a first alert weather morning, Thursday morning. Even Wednesday night, it's going to turn cold, and tomorrow it'll be about five degrees cooler than it will be this afternoon. 
This afternoon, not bad though. Look for about 49 degrees by 7 o'clock this morning in downtown Sarasota, and then temperatures kind of rising up to about the 70 degree mark by 3 p.m. A lot of sunshine around should be a nice afternoon. And then as you head into the evening, you can expect to see temperatures start to fall off into the 60s as you get to about 7 o'clock under mostly clear skies. Don't think we'll see much in the way of cloud cover coming in quite yet, but we will see a cold front arriving on our doorstep tomorrow morning. That cold front will start to sink southward across the region. It'll produce snow showers through the Ohio Valley today and then down into Texas. It'll transition into freezing rain around the Houston area. So if you're traveling to Dallas or Fort Worth or to uh, areas around Houston, Galveston, could be some issues with airport delays. The front will weaken in terms of its potency as it moves through the northern parts of the state of Florida, still producing the potential of some freezing rain in and around the Tallahassee area. But as it moves through behind it, the winds will pick up out of the northwest, become breezy and really drive down some colder air such that we'll probably see wind chill advisories up for our area. There may be a freeze watch up for areas of Hardy or DeSoto and certainly parts of north central Florida will see hard freeze warnings and freeze warnings up as much of the state of Florida will be covered with freezing air that will last about 24 hours. The good news is this is not going to be a prolonged cold period. It's going to be a cold snap and we'll only have one potentially freeze freezing temperature night across the state of Florida and even for our interior sections as we head into Thursday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Those are our first alert weather days, Wednesday night into Thursday. Then warmer today, be nice. It'll also be warmer again on Friday. So it's a little bit of a temperature roller coaster ride and then rain free throughout the week. Look at some of these temperatures across the nation right now. Three quarters of the nation are below freezing at this moment. We're seeing these cold temperatures in the minus single digits, even minus double digits in parts of the northern tier. Those are actual air temperatures. Those are not wind chills. And some of that colder air sinking southward will encompass much of the deep south. So this cold snap is a good one because it's not going to last very long and hopefully won't do much damage to our citrus crop. We'll see northeast wind coming in at about 5 to 10 this afternoon, increasing to 10 overnight, two foot seas, light chop. And here's your forecast. Looks like this for today. We'll have a daytime high that tops out at about 70 under mostly sunny skies tomorrow. A little bit cooler. That front moves through parts of North Florida tomorrow, moves through our area tomorrow afternoon, keeping our daytime highs from reaching much more than 65. And then tomorrow night, watch those temperatures fall off as we go into Thursday morning. We'll see those temperatures hovering around the freezing mark in most interior locations and mid 30s as you get closer to the coast. Then daytime highs on Thursday only hit 55. So it'll be a cold day with lots of wind blowing throughout the morning and into the afternoon. The good news is by later in the evening and into the night, we start to warm up and the rest of the work week looks pretty good. As we head into the weekend, we're back solidly into the 70s. Back to you. All right, time to take a look at your first alert traffic. Not much going on out there. You're starting to see a few pickups there, especially on 301 if you're headed southbound and a little bit of a blip on State Road 64. Other than that, not too bad in Manatee County. Now in North Sarasota County, starting to see some congestion on North and Southbound 41. But other than that, not too much out there either. Now if you're heading into South County again, not too much to see out there. Pretty slow and pretty quiet out there this morning. It is 618 and crews continue to search for three missing people following last week's deadly mudslide in Santa Barbara County, California. As reporter Jasmine Veal tells us, search dogs are now helping in recovery efforts. This is Rika. Uh, he's a uh, human remains detection dog and he He's as, as good a dog as I've seen. Rick Stein and his search dog Rika are volunteers with Santa Barbara County Search and Rescue and were some of the first responders here last Tuesday after the mudslides wiped everything out. It's just devastating. Um, th this is in my backyard. He's helping other search teams continue to dig, even climb through all of this rubble. I haven't been out in the mud today, but uh, on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, in areas I was down uh, close to my waist, um, and you stick in it, uh, there's always a chance of uh, a void underneath. Three red houses. LA Fire Captain Scott Quinlan and his team are moving more slowly and carefully through the destroyed homes today in an area where a lot of the mudslide victims were found on Olive Mill Road. Is there any hope of finding anyone alive still? We, we, we still have hope. Um, as, as far as alive, 
we're, we're kind of getting to you know more body recovery um, and that's that's what we're mainly focused on right now is to give uh, those families closure. Quinlan has responded to other disasters before like 9-11 and Hurricane Katrina but this is completely different, he says. It's uh, amazing how much mud came down here. Down the road, work continues on the 101 freeway where cars are still submerged and crews are moving slowly through the muck to suck up water, pick up the debris, and then repair all the signs and fences. Stein says they'll stay out here as long as it takes. As searchers in California are sifting through debris for people still missing from that mudslide, there is some good news. The number of those unaccounted for has gone down from four to three. 53 year old John Jack Keating, who had been listed as missing, was found alive in Ventura. He sent the sheriff's office a selfie with his dog to prove it. Crews are still looking for a 17 year old, a 28 year old, and a two year old. Now, Lydia's father and brother are among the dead. The mudslides, which came a week ago, have killed at least 20 people and destroyed or damaged hundreds of homes there. Mudslides, who'd have thought? Yeah, right. Amazing. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, the flu has gotten so bad nationwide it's prompted a meeting today of federal health officials. We'll tell you what they plan to discuss and what they could do to try and treat this threat when we come back. There's the Rosemary District. Chilly day out there. John's forecast on the way. It's time to take a road trip. If you love the beach, Alabama's Gulf Coast has 32 miles of sugar white sand and turquoise water. Looking for a room with a view? We have them. Beachside and Bayside. There's incredible history. Whoa! And the seafood is fresh from the Gulf. Another round of shrimp for my friends. Yeah. Alabama has a road trip with your name on it. Which one you gonna take? Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7. That happened in the past. I just want to let it go. So I think he had regrets about that, that, he ha that, that it still haunted him. But he tried to use it to his advantage as well. An ABC 7 exclusive with the wife of Clifford Irving. I'm Alan Cohn. Join us at the Trapezoid where we'll hear the truth about the hoax. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the mission first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. My name is Haley. I have fragile leg syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.employflorida.com. 48 degrees in Sarasota right now. 
Pretty shot there before day breaks. Beautiful, yes. Yeah, nice and quiet out there this morning mm -hmm. before everything gets underway. We upload uh, daily content to our Facebook pages. Check it out when you get a chance. We all have a page for you to inspect. Also, we're on Instagram each day as well now with uh, updates, so we record live on the news. That's show. right. We take you behind the scenes of everything going on. We have a great digital department here. That's right. All right, we're back now. All right, welcome back. It is 625, and CDC experts have switched today's special meeting from nuclear war preparedness to an even more imminent threat, <laughs> the flu. It's pretty serious to bump that topic. Right, right. Steve Osinsami has details. In this morning's GMA First Look, this 38-year-old father and picture of health needs machines to breathe after coming down with the flu. Adam York is still hospitalized in Birmingham in a medically induced coma. He likely got the flu from one of his three children because the kids were sick too. This is just a problem bug. We hate it when this bug shows up. And this year is one of those, and we probably are going to see a lot of hospitalizations and deaths. The CDC is calling it an epidemic sweeping across nearly every state, and there are 13 more weeks of the flu season still to go. We've tested nearly twice as many patients as we have the year before, and we're seeing about four times as much flu. And there's another problem. Hospitals need bags of IV fluid to treat the flu, and there's a shortage after Hurricane Maria shut down a factory in Puerto Rico. And coming up at 7 a.m., Dr. Jennifer Ashton weighs in live with your GMA First Look. I'm Steve Osinsami, ABC News Atlanta. The delicate skin on your neck can show age or not. Gold Bond Neck and Chest Cream helps improve texture and increase elasticity. 97% had visibly firmer skin. Gold Bond Neck and Chest for visibly firmer skin. In the history of people being asked how they like their eggs, we're pretty sure no one's ever said microwaved. You deserve a breakfast made with respect. Try the new bacon, egg, and cheese on brioche. Panera, food as it should be. With Advil's fast relief, you'll ask, what pulled muscle? What headache? Nothing works faster to make pain a distant memory. Advil Liquid Gels and Advil Liquid Gels Minis. What pain? There are 16 fresh picked oranges squeezed into each bottle of Tropicana Pure Premium. And absolutely no space for added sugar, water, or preservatives. Tropicana. We put the good in morning. I took my first handful of pills, and that's when all my priorities seemed to change. He would ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. He just assumed that they would have medication. He'd go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription drugs. I wish I knew really what these prescription pills were. We were so naive about the whole drug thing. These are all synthetic forms of heroin. Keep your medication locked up because you'll never notice that a pill is gone. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied, and her caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs, stop the crimes. Chris Domine is a husband, father, an athlete, even an Iron Man. But 10 years ago, Chris's kidneys were failing. The doctor said, if you don't do dialysis, if you don't get a kidney transplant, you are going to die. Then Chris received a second chance, made possible by an organ donor. Your well-being changes from loss of hope to better times ahead. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. 
I survived my cancer, but you can stop cancer before it starts. Talk to your doctor and go to thinkaboutthelink.org to learn more. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. This half hour on Good Morning Suncoast, a grisly find near the Braden River. Details of a body found with its mouth taped shut in Manatee County. Plus, the car of the year has been named. I'll tell you what it is and just why it took home those top honors at the Detroit Auto Show. Free admission today at the Manatee County Fair. will tell you which group is being honored at the 102nd annual event in Palmetto. Your Suncoast News starts right now. Live from the ABC7 studios. This is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. Good, Good morning. morning to you. It is what, 631 this it morning? It is 631. It's 48 it's degrees, and it's going to be worse later in the week, we hear. It is. <laughs> Unless you're a cold weather lover, in which case it'll be better. Nope. I pass no judgment. We're a layer just lover, just layers. The, the, gla the, glass layers. Is, the glass is frozen, not half empty. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly right. Cooper in Central Sarasota reports 49 degrees. So too does Morgan Lee in Bradenton, 49 degrees under mostly clear skies. Boy, there is some colder weather coming, though. Sorry. Wind chill uh, factors uh, on Thursday morning could be in the 20s. So some enjoy this morning, I guess is what I need to say. 48 degrees out there. We look for a dew point value that's a little warmer than yesterday. Today, making the heated air in your home feel a little more comfortable. 51 degrees by about 7 o'clock or so. And then as we head into the 3 p.m. hour, look for lots of sunshine. Warmer still than yesterday coming in at around 70. We won't see that again till Friday when temperatures will start to rebound from this cold snap coming that requires a first alert weather alert. So we'll talk all about it in a few. All right, talk to you soon. Let's check traffic right now. Some build up there on 14th Street West in both directions, not too far from Bayshore Gardens. Be aware of that in Manatee County. Otherwise, the usual slowdowns on State Road 70, checking the northern half now of Sarasota County. A little slowdown there as you head on University away from the Ringling Museum toward the airport. Otherwise, uh, pretty clear. 301, some slowdowns there. Checking farther south now on the South County map, mostly clear at 632 on your Tuesday morning. Our top story this hour, sheriff's deputies in Manatee County continue to search for answers regarding a dead body that was found in Bradenton yesterday morning. It happened near the Braden River. Our Rick Adams has details of the investigation. Well, the body was found right back there in this area around 8.30 Monday morning. Folks who live close by are completely shocked over this. It's very frightening. I mean, you know, you just... It worries you. That's the reaction from Phyllis Solcheski and others who live in the Sugar Creek Country Club in Bradenton. A dead body was found by a worker across the street from the development in a wooded area about 30 yards from 26th Avenue East. There was gunshots uh, around 5 o'clock that woke me up, but I didn't know that was what woke me up. Um, but I heard later there was a body found over there. Uh, with its mouth taped. The victim has been identified as 41-year-old Michelangelo Jacoby Grantley. Investigators are treating this as a homicide. Rod Paddock lives part-time near the property where the body was discovered. He says this is a very secluded area and it's very quiet as well. Nobody knows this back here. You know, when you when you got 10 acres right in the middle of the town of Brainton, very rarely people don't know it's even here. And the Manatee County Sheriff's Office is continuing with their investigation. If you know any more about this, you're being asked to contact authorities immediately. Reporting from Bradenton, I'm Rick Adams, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. In southern Sarasota County, an arrest has been made in last week's overnight homicide in Northport. Police arrested this man, 21-year-old Dante Stanley Jr. He has been charged with homicide, home invasion, robbery, other charges. He remains behind bars. They say he killed 19-year-old Trent Bartol Thomas of Sarasota. The suspect and another man burst into a crowded house about 1 a.m. in ski masks on Porto Chico Avenue and began shooting. Police are trying to find the other man at this point. 
An update now to another murder case in Sarasota County where the suspect's attorney is moving to stop the case altogether. Now, last month, 54-year-old William Case was arrested for the 2011 murder of Kensington Park resident Karen Kortz. Case's attorney filed a motion in court to halt the proceedings due to the defendant's presumed incompetence. Sarasota County detectives say the case was linked to the murder through DNA and shoe prints. A motion hearing is now set for January the 25th. New this morning, two drivers are recovering from serious uh, injuries after a crash in Venice. It happened at the intersection of Englewood and Loyola Roads. A Buick Regal was traveling eastbound and didn't see a Ford F-350 coming. The two collided. The driver of the Buick is expected to be charged with failing to yield to oncoming traffic. And developing overnight, the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office and the state fire marshal are investigating a fatal residential fire in Nokomis. County fire crews responded to a fire around 5.30 Monday afternoon in the 700 block of Florence Street. Officials say crews were able to ex extinguish the fire without it spreading to other homes. Fire department personnel later discovered a body in that home once the fire was out. Now, if you have any information on how the fire may have started, you're asked to contact the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office immediately. Now for the latest on this story, breaking news, plus your up-to-the-minute first alert forecast, especially going on later on this week, head over to our app. You can find it under WWSB or My Sun Coast. And happening today, a special election is four weeks from today to replace Alex Miller in the State House of Representatives. Now three candidates are vying for the chance to represent Sarasota in Tallahassee. And today is the deadline to register to vote. Our Marla Spence joins us now from a voting location in Newtown. Marla, good morning. Good morning, Ray and Stephanie. That's right. The North Sarasota Library behind me is just one polling location where residents will be coming to cast their votes February 13th for that special election. But if they are not registered to vote come today, they will not be able to cast their votes for State Representative District 72. Now, if you're not registered to vote and you are wanting to, what you can do is pick up an application at this library or any library across the Sarasota area. You can pick up a location a application at a post office or even at a driver's license office. Now, once you fill out that application, you will then take it over to the supervisor of election offices in Sarasota. Now, the candidates for the state representative district 72 are James Buchanan, Margaret Good and Allison Foxhall. Now, tonight, all of those uh, candidates will be meeting with residents in Sarasota at the Selby Library at 5:30. So, for anyone who was interested in meeting and greeting those candidates, they can do so at 5:30 tonight at the Selby Library. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Marla. In consumer news, CVS is taking photo shopping out of the picture in its beauty product ads. The pharmacy chain says it wants to eliminate any images that have been materially altered with touch-ups. Now, that includes changing the model size, skin, wrinkles, or other characteristics. CVS says there's a connection between unrealistic body images and negative health effects in young women. Now, the new policy will be rolled out by the end of 2020. It's the car version of the Oscars, and the winner goes to Honda for Car of the Year. The Honda Accord took home the 2018 Car of the Year Award at this year's Detroit Auto Show, selected by a panel of 60 automotive journalists. The Accord beat out Toyota's Camry and the Kia Stinger for the prize. Volvo's XC61 Utility of the Year, and judges chose the Lincoln Navigator for Truck of the Year. Florida preschool age children can get into SeaWorld free for the rest of the year. Parents have to register for the uh, discount card. You must register by May 13th, and the only offer is for kids who are five or under at the time they enter the park. And breaking news now into our newsroom from right here in Sarasota. We're hearing reports of a fire at the Mandeville Beer Garden on Lemon Avenue. Now, scanners first reported the fire overnight, and they have made an arrest, may have made an arrest. Initial reports say the fire may have also been set intentionally. We'll have more on this story as it develops throughout the day here, right here on ABC7. Now, scientists are also warning that red tide is back along Florida's southwest coast, even after a recent cold front knocked it back. Medium counts of red tide organisms were recorded in Lee, Charlotte, and Sarasota counties last week. Scientists have counted high levels of the algae linked to red tide in recent weeks along southwest Florida beaches. Now, although Sarasota County is now showing very low levels of it, red tide organisms do grow naturally in the Gulf of Mexico, but high concentrations are harmful to wildlife and can cause respiratory problems in humans. 
And the Venice Wildlife Center is gearing up for a big move. The Animal Hospital and Rehab Center recently bought a new property after efforts to buy the existing land fell through. Now the nonprofit center is working to raise enough money to rebuild cages for recovering animals and a 120-foot cage for eagles to learn to fly again. The center first has to apply for rezoning on that new property. We're very proud to, to have this second chance here in the same neighborhood, uh, and uh, we hope to make the most of it. The Wildlife Center hopes to have the rezoning and moving completed in just over a year from now. Happening tonight, the Manatee County Fair will hold its first Veterans Parade to honor Suncoast heroes. The event's on Memphis Road in Palmetto. It's a 102nd year. Military songs will be recited, thousands of flags passed out that thanks those who have served in the armed forces. The parade starts at 6 p.m. Today is also free admission at the Manatee County Fair, and it should be a pretty nice day yeah, for day, the bro. event. Yeah, lots of sunshine. Yeah, warmer time, warmish temperature. About 70. That feels good. Yeah, we I can't like complain 70. about that. Colder air on the way, though. Oh, yes, yes unfortunately. Yeah. We'll see a wind chill factor that'll probably make it feel like it's in the 20s as we head into the Wow, we're hearing the words wind chill factor. Uh, ah, it's I not thought. right. It's not fair. It's not right. It'll only last a day, though. We'll see the temperatures warming up again by the weekend. Details in a sec. All right, sounds good. And he's going to have your first alert forecast right after the break. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, the latest in your first alert traffic and the potential dangers of sneezing. We'll tell, you what, story. You, we'll <laughs> tell you what you need to know about a new health warning, and it's nothing to sneeze at, but first, a peek outside at the Rosemary District. We'll have more of John's forecast. It's going to get cold out there, folks. 641 right now and 48 degrees. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Our overall experience working with California Closets was phenomenal. Calm, reassuring. Through happenstance, we ended up paired with our designer, Jen. She was someone who not only was patient, someone who was professional. She's become extended family. She had great insight to help direct me towards those things that could make our dreams come true. We are the Greens, and this is our California Closet story. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. The classic film Singing in the Rain is coming to the Player Center in a live stage show opening January 17th. All the dances and all the songs you've come to know and love, all a part of our wild Broadway series. Get your tickets now for this limited run by calling the players at 365-2494 or visit us online at theplayers.org. You too can be Singing in the Rain. Serving part-time as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment to get an edge in the civilian world. Learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you at NationalGuard.com. Now your ABC7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So temperatures across the region are nice. Coming in at around the 50 degree mark, 51 in Venice, Inglewood the same, 52 Longbow Key, Bradenton at 48, Parrish at 48, 48 long at uh, Lakewood Ranch, Sarasota coming in at 48, 49 degrees in Mayaca, in uh, Wachula, Arcadia, Northport, and Punta Gorda. 
These are nice temperatures compared to where we're going to be Thursday morning, which is about well, if you factor in the wind chill, about 20 degrees cooler. So enjoy today. It's going to be a mild day. We'll see the sun shining throughout the day. Oh, that fog should go off there. No fog. Forget the fog. That's not right. Uh, but the temperatures are correct. 70 degrees by around uh, 3 p.m. And then as we head into the evening hours, partly cloudy skies and an overnight low coming in at about 55 or so. We'll look for quiet conditions through the morning hours into about 930. Just a few fair weather clouds around. No rain in the forecast straight through the noontime hour and into the evening hours as well. But a few of these clouds that will come in from showers over on the other coast, similar to yesterday, should make for a pretty nice sunset tonight and um, a pretty nice dawn tomorrow. I don't think there'll be much problems with the weather tomorrow morning either. It should be a fine commute day. Then, as we head into about 9 o'clock or so, we'll watch a cold front start to bring icy conditions to Tallahassee. That is a signal. That's a clue that colder weather is on the march. And that cold weather in the form of a cold front will be moving through here during the afternoon and into the evening hours. And that will bring us temperatures tomorrow that will run with daytime highs about 5 degrees cooler than today. Because the afternoon we'll see temperatures that will either be flat for the first half of the day or actually start to taper off as we head into the second half of the afternoon. That's because of the cold front moving through. Once the front is through, winds come, den, uh, come down out of the north and are cold winds. We get these cold air clouds that build out in Gulf and Atlantic waters. They really won't be a problem for us because the winds are going to be pretty much out of the north or north-northwest. What it will do is bring us very chilly weather Wednesday night into Thursday morning. The front comes through, kind of falls apart as it does so, but produces some fairly heavy snow in upstate New York. So if you're traveling to that area tomorrow into the New York City or, uh, or Jersey airports, it's going to be a problem, I think, because of the uh, weather. Then the front kind of falls apart. Jacksonville, especially Tallahassee, could have real problems with icy roads tomorrow morning. The front sinks southward, kind of falls apart. We don't get much in the way of any kind of weather around here but we do get much colder air. And it will be breezy as well. Small craft advisories will likely be issued for tomorrow night through Thursday morning, as well as wind chill advisories for Thursday morning. So it'll be a first alert weather day tomorrow night through Thursday because of the cold air and the breezy winds. Warmer today, though. Enjoy that. Temperature up around the 70 degree mark, and it'll be rain free despite the frontal boundary passing through right straight through the rest of the week. Check out the temperatures across the nation. I mean, really frigid air at this moment across the country. About three quarters of the country is at or below freezing. 24 degrees in Dallas. Atlanta's at freezing. Asheville's at 22. 22 degrees. Memphis at 16. And one's still enjoying 48 degrees around here. But the high temperature trend will show you the temperatures falling off as early as tomorrow afternoon. Plummeting on Thursday with nighttime lows, by the way, probably around 34 degrees, 35 degrees in downtown Sarasota. Inland, east of the interstate, much cooler than that. Then temperatures start to rebound pretty quickly. Look for a northeast wind at about 5 to 10. The forecast looks like this. Today we get up to about 70 degrees. Tomorrow only about 65. Temperatures plummet tomorrow night into Thursday day. Inland temperatures could be at the freezing mark. There may be a freeze watch issued for Hardy or DeSoto counties or east of the interstate. Then we start to warm as we head into the weekend back into the 70s. Back to you guys. All right, let's take a look at your first alert traffic out there. It is definitely starting to pick up. We're starting to see a little bit more congestion that is out there. The normal spots are starting to pick up around this time of the day, especially if you're coming into Sarasota from Palmetto or Ellington. You're starting to see some congestion on the bridges over there as well. Plus southbound 301, you've got some congestion right there near State Road 70. And then heading into North Sarasota, it's looking pretty good out there. You do have some congestion that's starting to pick up on Fruitville Road. And then if you head into South Sarasota, that is looking pretty good. You've got your normal uh, congestion that's just starting to get clogged up a little bit if you're heading towards Port Charlotte or Punta Gorda. But other than that, pretty smooth sailing out there this morning. And this hour is health smart. Have you ever heard the urban legend about it being dangerous to hold in a sneeze? Yeah. So I grew up hearing this. Turns out it's a real thing and it's actually more <laughs> dangerous than you might think. Yeah, a new report says the doctors say that sneezes produce pressurized air that can explode at speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. The report features a 34-year-old who uh, suffered a neck and throat injury as well as a small perforation to his trachea. Luckily, he did not need surgery, but he was hospitalized for two weeks, so do not hold in those sneezes. Mm.
entertainment news. Some fast work being done. Lifetime has announced that they are creating a TV movie about the love story of Prince Harry and his American fiance, Meghan Markle. The couple's wedding date is fast approaching May 19th, and Lifetime says it plans to debut the movie Whoa. before the royal wedding. <laughs> that is fast it's work out there. It's 15 minutes long. Though. It's 15 minutes long, yeah. Plus, Jane Fonda recently revealed in an interview that she had a cancerous growth removed from her lip. Now, she thought the procedure would have already healed and just wanted to explain why she was wearing a bandage on her face. Now, it's not the first health scare for Fonda. She's also had a small tumor removed back in 2010. And Groupon has a new spokesperson. And actress and comedian Tiffany Haddish, the Girls Trip star, spoke of her Groupon experience with Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith and Jimmy Kimmel last summer. Haddish is now an honorary Groupon employee with a Super Bowl ad in the works. I hadn't heard of her, so she's. Oh, she's the best part of Girls Trip. She's, is that right? Yeah, she's great. I have yeah. to start watching yeah, that. Very funny. She married and divorced the same guy named William Stewart twice. Okay. <laughs> I did, I, Random trivia brought thought, to you by Ray Collins. That's all this I can find is of note. She's there fabulous. Yeah, she's very funny. Up next, your day's top local news headlines and a surprising call for a 911 dispatcher in Indiana. That's right. We're going to tell you about the intense moments that unfolded over the phone when we come back. WWSB ABC7 is an equal opportunity employer, and we're looking for qualified people to join our dynamic team. For a list of current openings and to apply online, visit www.mysuncoast.com slash contact slash employment. If you're a motivated team player and you want a rewarding career in a fun, fast-paced working environment, WWSB ABC7 could be the perfect fit for you. Check out our list of openings now. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov concussion. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. When my youngest Addie was two and a half, she was diagnosed with leukemia. When we first heard that diagnosis, you feel extremely alone. Walking in that light the night light with 6,000 people carrying lights, white for survivors, red for supporters, gold in memory of those who have passed. It's the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's hope that every year there are fewer gold lanterns. Your lantern will make a difference. Start a team, join a team. Help us light the night. Want the latest weather and traffic conditions wherever you go? Introducing ABC7's revolutionary new First Alert weather app. With our state-of-the-art new weather app, you get up-to-the-minute weather alerts, interactive radar maps, current conditions, 10-day forecasts, real-time traffic maps, and weather video from ABC7, all at your fingertips. And it's free. Just search Suncoast WX in the App Store and download onto all your devices today. Sponsored by Mr. Sparky. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Keep up with the Sun Coast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. Oh, Gorgeous out there. Pretty shot there. Beautiful. Oh, nice.
Sunrise, they're making 48 degrees, though. John's forecast is a couple seconds away right now. Wow. <laughs> Here are some of the top stories that we're following for you on the chilly Sun Coast today. Detectives in Manatee County are trying to figure out who killed 41-year-old Michael Grantley. His body was found on 26th Street near Braden River with gunshots and tape over his mouth. Plus, Red Tide is back. Now, medium counts of the organisms were recorded in Lee, Charlotte, and Sarasota, County, Sarasota counties last week. Now, it grows naturally in the Gulf of Mexico, but high concentrations are harmful to wildlife, and they can actually cause some respiratory problems in humans as well. Free admission today for the annual county fair in Palmetto. There's also a 6 p.m. parade to honor veterans today, John. And well, it should be just beautiful as well. My fault. Let's check traffic right away. <laughs> I, John, I you do traffic too. <laughs> There's the roads right now. First off in Manatee County, some slowdowns on 301 and 41. Farther south now into Sarasota County, some blips there on the Clark Road. And our final map to the south will show us nothing much to report at 655. Okay, now, John, I'm sorry. It looks great. What can I tell you? Daytime high today tops out around 70. But watch out tomorrow night into Thursday morning. Cold air arrives on the Sun Coast with near freezing temperatures widespread and maybe some pockets of freezing. Finally, a 911 operator received quite an unexpected call in Indiana. It required him to be ready for anything. He thought it would be about the cold weather, but instead it was a little different. Briley Jones had gone to the hospital for contractions but was sent home. Wasn't quite time. Turned out it was time. <laughs> called 911. Her family quickly called, and dispatcher Eric Cox calmly delivered first aid instructions. Mom and baby eventually were taken to the hospital, and now they are doing just fine. And the bathtub will never be the same after that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You'll never look at the bathtub the same ever again after that story. Fast work by that wow, dispatcher, though. Yeah. And imagine, like, not being there. Like, you have to visualize everything that's happened and just walk. I give so much credit to the yeah. on operators. Good work. Amazing work that they do. All right, stay warm on this Tuesday. It's going to be chillier as the week progresses. That's right. Stick around. Good morning, America is coming up next.